consider this. If you were on a Zoom call with the CFO of your organization and he or she instructed you to do a rush wire transfer, would you make that payment as soon as the call ended? I wouldn't. Now, before you think I've lost my mind, or perhaps I'm looking to get fired for cause, give me a few more minutes and listen to what I do instead. It could save your career. You probably have heard about the deep fake images of Taylor Swift making their way around the internet and thought that had nothing to do with you. Regrettably, there have been some real life implications for the accounting, finance, treasury, and accounts payable community, and you need to know about them. You certainly don't want to find yourself in the press with a headline that reads something like, finance worker pays out $25 million after video call with deep fake chief financial officer. According to a report on CNN, and several other news outlets. A finance employee at a multinational organization got on a Zoom call with folks who he thought were several other members of the, converse, of the company. He was then tricked into paying out 200 million Hong Kong dollars to fraudsters who were using deep fake technology to pose as the company's chief financial officer on this video call. To put, in, to put it in perspective, that's a little over 25 million US dollars or almost 24 million euros or slightly over 20 million British pounds at today's exchange rate. It's a lot of money, no matter how you look at it. He grew suspicious after he received a message supposedly from the company's chief financial officer. The employee was in Hong Kong and the CFO was in the UK. Red flag number one. He suspected the original email was a phishing email as it talked of the need for secrecy for the transaction to be carried out. And that secrecy is a red flag. However, the worker put aside his early concerns about the video call because other people on the call in attendance had looked and sounded just like colleagues of his. And he recognized once his fears were allayed due to the presence of his colleague or what he thought was the presence of his colleagues, but actually were deep played. He wired a total of 200 million Hong Kong dollars in 15 different transactions into five different banks. Red flag number two, the fake CFO made increasingly urgent calls to him to execute execute the money transfers and the victim unfortunately complied with the instructions that had been given during the call. We don't know who the company was or the individual was, but clearly what happened is disturbing. It, it could happen anywhere. Red flag number three. Several of the reports indicated that the employee in question was a clerk. Now here's the question. Does this person normally receive wire instructions directly from the CFO? If the answer is no, and I suspect it might be, then not going through the normal chain of command should have raised some red flags. By the way, this is not an isolated case. The information was shared by the Hong Kong police, who also shared that they had made six arrests in connection with other deepfake scams, and that AI deep, deepfakes had been used at least 20 times to trick facial recognition software. It can happen there, it can happen where we are. How did they create such realistic deep fake? Here's what we think happened. The AI generated videos were created from past online conferences, so real, real stuff, if you will. The criminals then util utilized WhatsApp, email, and one-to-one -one video conference calls with some staff members in Hong Kong, as well as they used AI to, to create the realistic looking and sounding deep fakes that were ultimately used on the call to trick this guy. Only when he checked with the UK headquarters, sadly he didn't do this till after he sent the funds, did he realize that he had been duped. Now, by the way, if you heard me talk about fraud in the past, you may have heard me say that I wish I could predict what the new frauds would be as I'd be able to share this information with the community. I did in this case or at least I did partially. However, I didn't envision it going this far. I thought it would be limited to voices. I'll put a link to that video in the description and you can watch it after you finish this, but make sure you stay on so you can get all the best practice fraud protection trips. Tip. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about deep fraud, deep fake fraud scam protection. What can you do to ensure that this doesn't happen to you and at your organization? Fraud protection tip number one. Let me start with the advice that came from the Hong Kong police. They advise people to confirm details via regular communication channels. 
This means if the invitation came through by email, which we suspect it did, pick up the phone and call. Now, I realize that Hong Kong is eight hours ahead of UK, so this might have been difficult, but we're talking about a lot of money. Someone can come in a little early or stay a little late or make a call from home. I am sure that the employee involved in this nightmare wishes he had invested a little bit of time verifying the true identity of the person setting up the Zoom call. Fraud protection tip number two. The Hong Kong police also advise asking questions during the video conference to ensure that participants are real. This is a great suggestion. Try and make those questions focus on information that is not easily found online or ask something that you know will get corrected. So if the person is, if the person is real and not a deep fake. So for example, in this case, the employee could have asked the CFO if he or she had received information from the CEO that they had discussed in a prior call, maybe yesterday or last week, whatever. A criminal would simply reply no, thinking that they had dodged a bullet. But if the CFO is real, you'll probably get a response, something along the lines of, what are you talking about? We didn't have a call yesterday. Be creative. Alternatively, if you don't have that kind of relationship with the CFO, but do with someone else on the call, ask them something. By the way, if they are real, you can always apologize and explain why you were asking this. You get where I'm going. Fraud protection tip number three. Share information about this fraud, and by the way, every other new fraud you might encounter, with as many people as possible, including your entire staff and everybody up and down the uh, food chain, if you will. Information is the silver bullet when it comes to fighting all sorts of fraud. Knowledge that a fraud is spreading is the first, toward, first step towards stopping it. It's not the only tactic, but it's a great first step. Now, before we get to the last few tips, I'd like to suggest that you, you take a start on that last tip and share this video with your community, both at work and personally, because I hate to think about the implication of this for the romance scams that are working their way around the internet. You can do that by simply hitting the share arrow below and sharing on your social media sites or in an email. Also, if you find this useful, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit the like or the thumbs up button. By doing this, you let me know you find this useful and I should share more news about new frauds when I become aware of them. A thank you to everyone who liked, gave me a thumbs up or commented. Fraud protection tip number four, trust your gut. In this case, the employee's first impression was that the email was a fake. Now, occasionally your gut might be wrong, especially if you're very nervous about something, like a fraud, but if your gut tells you something is off, at least do a little investigation. Ask someone else to take a look at the email to make sure. Fraud protection tip number five, carefully study email addresses, especially if you think something's off. Some organizations regularly run phishing email tests on their employees. This is a great way to keep everybody on their toes or looking for phony emails so they don't do something like this. I think this issue, as demonstrated here and with many other electronic payment frauds that continue to plague our organizations, I think this is so important that we created a short quiz everyone can take to see if they can identify phony email addresses. You can take it right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description. Maybe also have your staff take it as well. See how they do. Stay safe, everyone.